According to some military and defense experts, if the past administrations supported these military projects, maybe the Philippines won't suffer from bullying today. You are about to learn one of the biggest secrets in the history of the world. It's a secret that has huge effects for everyone who lives on this planet. Maybe some of you don't know that once upon a time. The Philippines is one of the most powerful countries in Asia when it comes in military forces. According to some research about the history of armed forces of the Philippines, the Philippines owned numerous number of fighter planes, jet fighter, attack helicopters, warships, a submarine chaser, war tanks, and one of the most advanced super weapons in Asia named Bongbong-1. So today in this video, we will talk about how powerful is the Philippine military forces during the President Marcos regime. A military forces with the most modern equipment in Asia that you could never imagine as of today. According to some research, only three countries around the world owned, bought F-8 fighter aircraft. Aside from France and the United States, the Philippines is the only country in Asia who owned bought F-8 Crusader. Bought F-8 Crusader is a carrier-based air superiority jet aircraft, gained fame during the Vietnam War in the 1970s. By destroying 19 Vietnamese aircraft in an air-to-air -air combat during that war. During the Marcos regime, the Philippines acquired 35 units of bought F-8 Crusader in 1977. However, these aircraft were destroyed during Mount Pinatubo eruption and never been replaced after the Marcos regime. The Philippine Air Force also acquired 19 units of F-5A and 3 units of F-5B light fighter aircraft from 1965 to 1967. F-5A Freedom Fighter aircraft was also used by the very famous Blue Diamond Aerobatic Team in 1968. The Blue Diamond is a national aerobatic team of the Philippine Air Force and one of the oldest formal flying aerobatic teams in the world. Every Independence Day, the Blue Diamond performed their aerobatic skills and techniques up in the sky to show the world-class talent of Air Force pilots in the Philippines. BRP Andres Bonifacio PF-7 is a Philippine Navy warship acquired by the Philippines in 1976. It was built by Lake Washington Shipyard in the United States and served as a lead ship in the Philippine Navy. BRP Gregorio del Pillar PF-8 is a Philippine Navy warship acquired by the Philippines in 1976. Just like the BRP Andres Bonifacio, it is one of the largest combat ship of the Philippine Navy during that time. BRP Diego Silang PF-9 and BRP Francisco de Gohoy are the other warships acquired by the Philippines in 1976 and 1979. However, after the Marcos regime, these four large warships of the Philippine Navy were discarded and sold as scrap. The Philippines also acquired four warship destroyer escorts. The BRP Rahalakandula PF-4 in 1976. The BRP Datu Kalanchao PS-76 in 1967. The BRP Datu Sikatuna PF-5 in 1976. And the BRP Raja Humabun PF-6 in 1978. Fleet minesweeper like the BRP Datu Tupas PS-18 in 1975. Two coastal minesweepers, the RPS Zambalias and RPS Zambonga del Norte in 1979. Two minesweepers, the RPS Davao del Norte and RPS Davao del Sur in 1979. Two submarine chasers, the BRP Nueva Vizcaya in 1968 and BRP Negros Oriental in 1976. 26 units of amphibious warfare vessels, where some of these units are still active until now and a hospital ship, the RPS Hospital Nang Tulungan in 1975. 
During the President Marcos administration, the Philippine Army has a secret program named the Santa Barbara Project. A secret project where the Philippine Army is developing a locally made missile called Bongbong-1. The Bongbong-1 missile has a 12 km firing range, and it was built by the Filipino scientists, with the help of German engineers and scientists. From 1972 to 1980, these missiles were successfully tested 37 times in Caballo Island. On September 1975, after the successful launching of four Bong Bong missiles, many people asked why is the Philippines making its own missile program. President Ferdinand Marcos then replied. The defense of the Philippines cannot be left to alliance with other countries. We must assume that there will be contingencies where even the United States may not be ready to come to our assistance. During that time, the Philippines had already a successful missile program, while China was still developing its first missile program. There's also a report that President Marcos had an underground submarine program together with his missile program. However, after President Marcos' regime, all of these military programs were disbanded and abandoned. According to some military and defense experts, if the past administrations supported these military projects, maybe the Philippines won't suffer from bullying today.